Are you dreaming about travelling again? I bet you are. So give yourself a break and listen to my brand new travel podcast. It's made for people like you, by people like you. And in these podcasts, there will be interviews with different types of travellers and the strange characters that I've met on the road. With stories and anecdotes from the last 32 years of my continuous backpacking and working around the world. Also, there'll be cynical destination descriptions and the occasional travel tip to smooth your journey. And for all the squeamish listeners out there, I just want to say that no studio was used or abused in the making of these podcasts or any of the recordings. So please check it out, and I hope you like it. Oh, and by the way, my name's Alan. Due to an incredible thunderstorm with lightning and torrential rain, this interview had to be conducted inside. I apologise for any additional sounds of the rain hammering on the window panes. Thank you. Today, I have that lovely young couple that I tried to interview before, and now I've got them. This is the couple who started travelling in a camper van, but now they're backpacking. And I want them to tell their story. I'll let them introduce themselves, and then we'll find out what happened. Hi, my name is Alicia, and I'm from Germany. Hi, I'm Philip. I'm coming from Serbia. And what did you do in Germany? Uh, I was working as a software developer. Okay, and did you enjoy it? Yeah, I did. Okay, did. and what did you do back home? Well, I was... I'm working as a graphic designer. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, again, if, if I need any software or graphics, you're, yeah, you're the people. Work, yeah. 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 We also work did. together. So. Okay. <laughs> and that's how you met, is it? Yeah. Okay. Let's hear the story about the camper van because this is something else. A lot of people dream about traveling in a camper van, as you possibly did. And you started, start with how you bought the camper van, how, why you got the idea, and stuff like that. So the idea, I mean, I had then in, what was it, I think 2019, I started a new job and actually I was like, oh, okay, my life now will get like to, it will be like completely um, nine to five and blah, blah. And I, I kind of panicked. <laughs> and you I panicked. said, yeah, like after a couple of weeks in the job, I panicked and I said, okay, I, I don't think this is the life uh, for me. Was and it a software, dis- what, software yeah, engineer? Okay. It was. I know, I mean, I, lo- I still work as a software developer and I really, really like it, but just is like, okay, going every day in the office, every day having the same routine. And, and then I asked him, he also just started his uh, job, new job like a couple of weeks before, and I asked him, can we buy a camper van and piss off? <laughs> oh, good girl, good girl. <laughs> and, okay, so how did you find the camper van? Uh, it took us like almost nine months, I think. Okay, but where did you look? Online. Oh, online. online. You didn't go to auctions or you didn't go in the newspaper no. or anything like that. No, no, no. Completely well, we online. were we were kind of for a couple of weeks also creeping on other campers around the city, in Berlin, just yeah, like oh, this could be the moment. Out. Okay, so what did you buy? So we bought a Mitsubishi L300, 30 what? years old. What color was it? White. Oh, it's white. Like beige white. It's funny because I had this blue I, this blue in my head. <laughs> I don't know why it was blue. Um, okay, and what, what, was in, what did it have inside? Basically everything. Um, it has a bed that you could turn into a working yes. uh, station, basically. Uh, a really, really super small bathroom even. And, well, kitchen. So, and we had electricity. Could you stand up inside yeah. or was it, yeah. you could stand up? Yeah. Okay, and what about two beds, three beds? So yeah, it had two beds. I mean, one was kind of a table that you can just put down and put pillows. Yes, on top yes, of it. yeah. So, uh, it the other hard. one was more, a bit more claustrophobic actually. So we were actually using all the time the, the one above the table. Oh, okay. And I mean, also when we were looking for it, we were searching for something that would be really small, so yeah. it wouldn't take that much attention. But yeah, at the same time that it could be like comfortable to okay, work yeah. inside, to I don't know, cook, to I don't know. Yeah. Have, have it's, it's difficult, cook. isn't it? Because then, then you yeah. also have price. Yeah. yeah. And what sort of how much old Mitsubishi costs? We paid five uh, k. Okay, five thousand. And is that a good price? 
I think so because it literally had also like solar panels and everything, warm water, like it was like the guys that had it before they treated it very very good. Okay. And, so yeah. how long had you had it before you started travelling? Uh, I think maybe two or three weeks. Two or three weeks and you were driving it around and going ha ha ha, we're living <laughs> the life. <laughs> you must have been like that. Yeah. You do. You yeah, do. we made, we had like one one trip um, with friends. But weren't you giggling? Weren't you going? Ha! Ah, we've got this. <laughs> it it we're going to escape. The amazing feeling was actually all the time feeling like. So even if it was really small, it always felt like you're all the time outside somehow. Okay. So it always had this super refreshing feeling. So even when we would work, for example. It would feel so much refreshing that, I don't know, for example... You weren't scenario. locked into an office? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, example, like, she would drive, I would work in front seat, for example, and all the time, like, seeing new, new sites. So, like, even for a second, you know, it would be still, like, I don't know, the eyes, the brains would, co would con constantly, like, refresh it. Yeah. The whole work, the whole everyday life felt so much lighter, in a way. So it never felt like, okay, now I'm working, now I'm stopping to work, living, going outside, I don't know, meeting people, doing whatever. It all, always felt so much more, I don't but know. But that's interesting. Why don't they make offices then with big windows in the countryside where people can look out onto the trees and see birds and animals and things? Actually, my brother, my older brother is building up something like that. It just, in, it just makes sense. Yeah. That if people are happier looking through a window and working and looking at, say, birds or yeah. sheep or something, would be much better than just looking at another brick wall. So this brings me on to the question of how long have you been together? A couple of years. Two years. Okay, and no relationship is absolutely 100% perfect. You get it as 99% as you can. But when you're traveling, you're with other people all day, every day, week after week. And if you get on with someone in that situation, you can get on with them for the rest of your life. I've seen so many couples break up mm. after they've gone traveling. Well, that's a funny thing, actually, because um, so we were friends. It started from I mean, we had this had trip. Situation. We had this trip when we went to South America. We went back backpacking for I don't know. How long were you in South America for? For four months. Oh, but back then we were friends, but then we had like as friends like, a situation yeah, like where we, we thought like, "Oof, this is too much." Yeah, like so we kind of went already as friends through this um, this environment, and oh. we would be like really often all the time together. Yeah. Okay. Just, it, yeah. It's intense. It's yeah. really intense yeah. for, with, with another person. Yeah, I mean, even for, uh, for friends, it's, it's just like to, to be with anybody yes. all the time. That yes. Well, so, yeah, in a relationship I guess, even more. I guess, <laughs> yeah, so I guess that... But uh, I think yeah. with a relationship, you've accepted the other person's bad habits. Yeah. I don't know. I think what we kind of ended up doing, we just really make fun of each other a lot. Well, I think also actually, I even actually, as friends, we had this kind of goal to, I don't know, explore things together. And it just always it had this background. It was just really background. boring without him for yeah. me. It was just like, oh man. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, I mean, I went also like for a week to make a, a diving license. And I was all the time thinking, oh, I, I wish you would be here. Yes. You want to share things with people when you travel. You yeah, and it's, also, and it's also really rare to find a person that would be even as a friend actually that you can share these moments in that way constantly so yes. uh, that's really it's, it's all know. to do with tolerance it's all to do with how much you tolerate a person now mm -hmm. this brings me on to the bad habit thing does he have a lot of bad habits obviously not because you're with him and does this young lady have bad habits nothing that heavy i mean situations come, come yeah, and go come but and nothing go. that i would catch as oh my god <laughs> I mean, yeah it depends it's, uh, you know, i guess not, just I, I don't know what women can do that could be that bad but yeah well i would try to understand like how it how that problem could actually look like from her perspective and just kind of to try to, yeah. She's so. very understanding, it makes it really hard to have fights. <laughs> so. Okay, here's another thing. Do you have brothers and sisters? A sister, a younger a sister. A sister? Yeah. Older or younger? Younger, younger. Oh, younger sister, okay. Yeah. This could be, this could she be. She was a good training. <laughs> yeah, so I was going to say. <laughs> if, you had, if you were brought up with like seven brothers, it might be different. You'd be a bit less tolerant, maybe, or a bit more macho or something, I'm not sure. What about you? You've got brothers and sisters? Two brothers, yeah. Oh, well, that's brilliant. <laughs> you see, you've learned about how, how basic men are. <laughs> before, Going back to the basics. <laughs> before you even got involved. So, that's, no, it's very good. And are they older or younger? Uh, I'm the sandwich kid, so... Oh, OK, yeah, yeah. It's funny <laughs> because I'm in the middle too, but it's, there is a thing about being in the middle. But you have uh, brothers? Two, two sisters. Two sisters, yeah. How's that? <laughs> the sisters! But, but uh, yeah, I learned nothing. <laughs> I learned nothing from my sisters. Uh, anyway, I might even cut that bit out. Um, back to the travelling. So you've bought the camper van. It's cream colour. It's got everything in it. 
What sort of condition is the body? Is it rusty or is it good? Or yeah, well, I think that's the part of actually uh, thinking about buying an older, more economical car in the beginning because later it turns out that there were so many things to fix. I mean, we love that car, seriously. Yeah. I mean, it at some point started feeling like a third person actually yeah. being with us. It yeah. wasn't just a Did car. Did you give it a name? Yeah. Yeah. It's just <laughs> we just called it the homie. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but from the other hand, I don't know. I guess like that his time paid the price in a way that I don't, there was all the time things to repair we would fix one thing even in Serbia because what was the first things to break inside small things or uh, well the first suspensions. thing suspensions suspensions yeah because it was it really felt unstable to drive so was it weaving around yeah, on the road yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. like one thing was kind of leading to another first it was suspension it was suspensions then some uh, uh, thing about around the motor like a okay. pump, uh, I don't oh, yeah. know the name. Yeah, there, it was a bit rusty, so there, that was still in the always and in not the much, that was like the thing I was surprised most about the car, it was like really not... Okay, great. it was in yeah. good condition. Yeah. You did expect a few things to go wrong. Did you go away for weekends? Before, yeah. yeah, well we just had like literally three weeks, so... Okay. Before that, before we went on travel, so yeah, we yeah. did one... And uh, then you've gone away for a few, and then you're going, now's the time to leave. How did that come about? How did you... So realize it's time to leave and let's go and let's pack our so, stuff up. Since the moment we decided, we said like, okay, from in, a, in one year from now, we oh. were work or we work a year. I mean, we work both a year in a nine to five job and right. put the money aside. And then, but after yeah, nine, ten, ten months, we basically already started because I was too ambitious. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but you started traveling. How far did you get before the car broke or the vehicle broke down? Uh, we arrived, well, we went to Serbia, we stayed the summer there, then we passed like... But it was all working all the time? It yeah. was good? Yeah, no, uh, it, it, around the end uh, of the Serbian time it started to go a bit bad and then no, in no. Italy it, it broke down. Well, actually thing. we fixed so many things already in Serbia, so we thought we were completely ready to leave. Okay. And yeah, everything was fine until we, so we went through, passed through Hungary, Austria and entered Italy. And that's when we we thought to stay in at my father's place in Italy, North Italy, uh, for a couple of days only. And literally, I don't know, two days later, we started noticing like huge marks on the floor, oil. on oil. the ground yeah. of oil. And then we because the plan was uh, to start the trip from Serbia, pass through Italy, yes. and then arrive, to go to Portugal. Okay. To reach Portugal around yes. Christmas time, but then yeah, that happened. So we went to mechanic. There was this complicated problem with the motor actually. Is it the engine or the gearbox? The gearbox. It the was. Gearbox. We thought it was the engine, but yeah, in yeah. the end it is the gearbox. Yeah, so I mean it was really expensive and uh, he basically stitched it in a way that we yes. could uh, reach, reach uh, Berlin right, and leave it there to her brother's place and yeah that's also what we did in a way so that was a kind of a detour. Were you lucky you had somewhere to put the van? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean it was really stressful in that first days because it was like oh my god everything was perfect and ready and yeah, this yeah. and that but it would, have, it would have gone so much worse like I don't know we thought to take a train, a uh, boat from, uh, a ferry from yeah. Genoa to Barcelona for yes, example. Yes. It could have happened in Barcelona for example and, yes. and then, then we literally would be completely stuck there so at least we had this chance to okay. drive back north. How many kilometers had you driven in this before you uh, started having around the Around 5,000. So you did quite a few kilometers, yeah. quite a few kilometers before you started having trouble. Again the only problem is with engine oil, okay, you can pour it into the top and it just comes out the bottom and you, you can keep it going that way but a gearbox it's if the empty. oil comes out the gearbox, it's empty. You might as well, yeah. <laughs> it's like it doesn't take long before it will seize up. It is what yeah. it is. You are here, so you put the van in Berlin. Your backpacks out of the back. We took the next flight. <laughs> and you flew out. Okay, was that a ten a ten euro flight? It actually was worth twenty two euros. So okay, it was. Years. Yeah, I, I looked it up a couple of days ago. I, I think it was super super well, cheap. Yeah, that, that was also a really good lesson that we are also looking to uh, like learn in a way is that actually I don't know not to be not sad, take yeah. not take not to take I don't know changes of situations that hard and heavy yeah. and just to yeah just really to be actually flexible to adapt and, and to do the best yeah that right the thing about having a problem is nothing to do with the problem it's how you solve it yeah exactly mm -hmm. okay if you a lot of men and I'll tell you this because I am a man they <laughs> they go into denial. So, for example, the windscreen wipers will break. Oh yeah, I'll do that tomorrow, I'll do that tomorrow. And then they never do it. Yeah. The, secret, <laughs> the secret is to do it there and then. 
is to get it over and done with, you'll feel a lot better and you won't even have to keep worrying about, oh yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. So the secret with all the problems is to do them there and then, get them out of the way and move on. It's just that men don't learn this very quickly. I know. <laughs> <laughs> any, more, any more than they read instructions just, when they I'll bought something new. <laughs> best form of travelling for you, What's, what would be the best? Would it be a, a camper van or are there better ways to travel? Well, it depends actually what, what's the most important. For example, because when we started backpacking through South America, there was always this part of working every day. Not working every day, but like having at least a part of the day, I don't know, working constantly on something, if it's your personal project okay. or working actually or whatever. After a while, we started missing that part. And that's that kind of made us thinking, okay, what could be an alternative to this similar, but that could allow us actually to do that without... That's having... the first time I've ever heard that. Yeah. Nobody's ever said that they wanted to be doing something. Mm. No, I mean, for me, for me it was really, I burned out from not having actually something to do in South America and that's why okay. the next time I said okay I will be working and traveling at the same time. Okay, yeah, and, and, and sorry, it would also avoid this kind of effect that when you're back from the travel you have this feeling like okay now I have to settle down for a period, yes. work, say to save money, yes, to, yes, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So yeah. maybe that way of balancing, balancing these things out would maybe remove that thing, that effect that when Perfect. you're going back home yeah. you're okay now this is like a boring, boring part where you have to but instead, if you would like, I don't know if it's possible, depending on what a person is doing, actually to, even for a couple of hours per day work, then you would never even have to stop traveling in a way. I mean, you could just, I don't know, be all the time. Yeah, the I, I've had people from both things. They've, some people burn out very fast from traveling. It's called travel fatigue yeah. and it happens. Some people only travel for six months and they've had enough. Right. And you're absolutely right with this. Fit it all together so you have the package you want. Like, work for two hours a day, earn a little bit of money and still travel. Yeah, that it didn't, wouldn't, it didn't have to be like maybe because it's really easy to go to this like, oh, it's all about this or all about that. So we kind of really sit down and, and thought like, okay, what would be the way that you can have a bit of everything? You yeah. Know? It wouldn't be like all about traveling and crazy adventures. So sometimes, of course, like you would like to go out, you can't because you have to do your couple of, yeah, yeah. you have to finish your things. But from the other hand, it's, yeah, I don't know, just... Well, the thing about society is that it tries to corral you into being a type of person, which means you grow up, you get a girlfriend or a boyfriend, you settle down, you get a job, you, and then you earn the money to get married and have a children mm -hmm. and buy a house and have a car. And mm. Then you become like, you're just in society and there's no escape from that to go travel. I was, I was so scared of sure, that thing. Yes. That, that besides working like, but like you're nine not to five, own. it was There's like, a lot of people mm. in this world that are like that. Yeah. Yeah. Especially girls. I've met several Girls from, say, Germany, Holland, they just escape. They just get on a plane and fly out because they don't want to be trapped into that yeah. cycle of routine. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you can, you've done the right thing. You've tried to combine the two things, and um, I just think that's perfect. I think you can't be any better than that. So your favourite form of travel is a camper van? Not really. Actually, I, what I really like the most is driving by train somehow. Trains are nice because yeah. you just sit on them, look out the window, yeah. and it's really all controlled. Like you just you can use your, your brain can run, mm -hmm. and, and you can see what's going on outside in the country you're going through. Yeah, I mean maybe a camper van is up there for sure, but I mean I always wanted to try traveling by bike for a, like on a longer roads. Yeah, but I mean I never tried it for that long, so I, I don't know if I would really like. But it do you think long. this could be an, a journey? You could carry bikes on the on the camper van once it's fixed. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. So we had this idea also if we went in the direction of Asia, for example, I don't know to go to China on a bike. Or yeah, yeah. Like to do a whole country and just to leave a camper somewhere and outside. Do, do because parts. Yes. we couldn't enter. We, we had the ideas. Right. Some maybe. countries you can't take foreign cars in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Vietnam's one. True, true. So, you but can't. yeah, it was just an idea how, how to combine it somehow, but for another time. There, there's always a situation that if you go, let's say you go to a country and you can't get it in, you can have it transported through the country and out the other side on a trailer. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one way. Another way is to have it shipped round to the, to the other next that's country. That's what, these things. what I was thinking about. The, yeah. So there's, there's always options for this. <laughs> and yours? What's yours? Favorite way My of traveling? traveling? Motorbike, I think. Mm. Uh -huh. For me, it's the, the big. It's the best freedom. Mm -hmm. The bicycle thing is good, but it's. It, I can't. I can't use a bicycle because I had a motorbike crash, so I can't yes. bend my legs. So, bicycles out. But again, a motorbike, um, even though they're quite dangerous, is a great form of transport. You hear what's going on around you, even though you've got a helmet on. You see stuff. You smell the scene, the the area you're going through. And then with the, like a tent. Uh 
Or yeah, yeah, I used to carry everything on mine, even stuff I didn't really need. Like I had a, I made a, a mini distillery so I could distill no water. That's so Not for cool. alcohol, it was just for water. So yeah. I could put filthy water in it uh -huh. and distill fresh water. And I made that, so it's quite easy. You just boil water and then have the, the steam go up into the tubes and comes down and just condenses into a cup. But you sold your last motorbike or it broke down? Ah, it was the accident. It was the accident, yeah. Okay. I hit, a truck hit me and, and the uh, bike was basically finished. When it was, it is what it is, you know. I mean, but, at least you survived. Yeah, so, <laughs> and yeah, you can walk eight, and everything. Eight, eight so. operations. How many languages do you speak? Three. Three. English, German, and Italian. In Italian. Also three. Uh, Serbian, English, and Italian. Also. Okay, and what language do you communicate in between you? English. English yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. This is, okay. <laughs> Sometimes in Italian when we are with friends around, but okay. never between us. No. <laughs> do you have a language that you speak when you get angry with each other or anything, or when you're shouting? I'm I'm sometimes yelling in Serbian, yeah. <laughs> like random, <laughs> random, like yeah. You could, I mean, you could swear in, in Serbian and yeah. nobody'd know, would they? They wouldn't know. No. What you're but saying. more like when I'm pissed or grumpy or something. Yeah. You know, just like. Uh, yeah. Especially when he's grumpy with his computer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I doubt if that's very often though, is it? Oh yeah, all the time, every uh, second day. What about countries you visited as, as you know, throughout your life so far? Have you done many countries or? Well, she mm, for no, sure. No, I don't know, more. I think, no, not many. I mean, I, I traveled to South America, North America, Europe. I mean, I think I didn't go so far to Australia, but even in Europe, it's not like I saw that many countries. So I never saw like the northern countries, for example. I, I was never in England, um, so you, there is still so let many. Let me tell you, don't go. It's so expensive <laughs> and it's always wet and rainy and grey. <laughs> this is why I don't live there. Funny stories. Do you have any funny stories of things that's happened to you while you've been on the road that you still laugh about? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we had like a, a funny situation with a guy in Peru, that kind of you know, Peruvian guy that kind of somehow thought we would be a good match at three. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and then we went on. We were doing couch surfing, and yeah. like there were like a constant I mean, let invitation. Me, let me tell you now, <laughs> I'm no fan of couch surfing. Okay, simply because I've heard too many bad stories. But it wasn't bad. And, it and was it's funny. not all from girls. No, no, it's funny. But he was possibly serious. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. why it's not that funny. The place you get this couch surfing. Is he an old guy, a young guy? No, he was like maybe middle of thirty. So. Okay, and he suggests that you'll get to in the same bed, basically. Yeah, okay. <laughs> pretty clear. Okay. Pretty clear, and that's just literally because. There is a club in Berlin called the Kit Kat Club, and we just told Kit? Them Kit Kat Club. Oh, the Kit Kat it's, Club. It's like a fetish club, and okay. it's like one of the things, as a tourist also in Berlin, you try to do, because it's just really, really freaky. I mean, it's fun. Yeah, but is it like, like, a, like it's group sex or an orgy, or what is it? It can be anything, literally. Okay. Anything. Well, and, and we just told him, we went there once, I mean, we saw it. Oh, then and he thought, he thought literally, yeah. okay, that means we have to be kinky or whatever. Yeah, yeah, so he yeah, thought, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. this is going well, to here's my opportunity. No, because he said he had the exper experience that he had an orgy, which I didn't. But yes. And so he was expecting that from us. It right. was so weird, actually, actually, yeah, a bit more of that story is that actually, so it was a new year. So it was like, okay, other friends are coming around 10 or some things to have, like later to like kind of celebrate all together or something. So we were supposed to meet around 6 or something. Yeah, and yeah. it was like around 10 already, 31 December around 10. And there was nobody still here. It was here. the three and of us. We, we were like, whoa, wait. Oh, so are these friends even existing? You're hoping people are going to turn up to defuse the situation. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So like, I don't know, the whole thing was but so weird. But people did turn He's up. Yeah. He phoned them up and just said like, don't come, don't come, it's off, it's off. Yeah, yeah. Thinking he was going to get lucky. No, but but also like the first night he, where he invited, and we, we were staying somewhere, at some other couch surfing, whatever. And he invited us to stay at his place, so ah, you don't have to look for another person. It was like yeah. super nice. And when we arrived, he had like his bedroom. He said like, ah, I have two bedrooms. Okay. okay. And he said like he had his bedroom prepared only with candles. It was like kind oh, of really wow. cute. Yeah. <laughs> and we were like, nah. Well, I think we said we're good. I think we're gonna. Yeah. kind of going in the other bedroom and then at night whenever some of us would like stand up to go to the toilet we'd literally run out of the room <laughs> and ask guys do you need something <laughs> oh my god wow. Wow. and we were supposed to stay um, like 
I don't know, I think three, four days, and then the day after, like we said that night, and then after New Year we left. But how did you diffuse that little conversation? Like he goes, well, let's all go into the same bed. How, how was, what was your reaction? There? I just said, no, I'm, I'm fine. I think I'm going there. Okay, <laughs> like, okay. uh, he was like, <laughs> he didn't know at all what to do. He was completely yeah. overwhelmed. Again, the other thing is I've, having been in these situations myself, you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, yeah. but you may need a good night's sleep as well. It might be just the fact that that, or yeah, another day may have been different. Yeah, it's to diffuse it so nobody gets upset. Mm -hmm. But when we're off, when we're not recording, remind me to tell you the story, <laughs> or one of the stories I know <laughs> that I can't even put on about a guy. Uh -huh. Okay, and it was it was strange. I'll tell you afterwards. Anyway, we'll cut that bit out. <laughs> okay, what about bad story? I know that's a good funny story, but what about a bad story? Would it be breaking down in the van, or would it be running into some bad people? Have you ever had that situation? No, I actually it's funny because we always mention that story as the worst. I mean, the worst story that happened in South America in general. I mean, but in the where was it again? Where was that story? In, in Lima. In Lima. Uh, oh, that was Lima. Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know Lima well, and nobody ever invited me round. <laughs> anyway, no, yeah. So I mean, the rest, I mean, never. No. Also in South America, yeah, honestly, but we look pretty homeless in that period. <laughs> we were also hitchhiking all the whole yeah, time. Yeah, maybe and we that's right. Dirty and yeah, but maybe that, again, that's the thing. A lot of people who are travelling on their own would fall straight into that. I get offers all the time. <laughs> yeah, I get <I'll> off. <laughs> but we won't go into that now. Maybe that's also how this trail fatigue happened in South America because we basically lived out of yeah living in a tent and couch surfing all the time. So four months of basically going, that was amazing. I mean, just meeting all the people and but like we were never. I mean, but yeah, I mean, it's never. I guess it's weird. It's not how it works that you just go somewhere and sleep at some of these places. It's like also the connection part and everything. Which brings me on to when did you start traveling? How how young were you? Did you travel with your parents on holiday and then? slowly start going off on your own? Yeah. Yes? Which I mean, I, I was traveling with my family, I guess, in the first 20 years of my life. And then I had my, in the beginning of 20s, my first, like, solo travel you to look, India. Listeners, let me tell you, she looks 18 now. <laughs> so she, she's talking about, or after she was 24. No, I'm 34 now. Well, okay, she doesn't look 34 anymore. Um. I mean, I wasn't traveling that much before, but I was moving moving around really often. But so. in, in your country, do people go off camping and hiking? And not hiking? really. It's not that much that, that much common, actually. Okay. That common to actually... Do people travel out of there more now than they did before? Or? Yeah, it's it's more open for sure than okay. before. But still, I mean, to have this way of, I don't know, traveling in a camper van or something, it's for sure not that common. I mean, but I guess even less, even less... That's great. Doesn't that make you feel good? Yeah, yeah no, it, was they, a, it was an interesting experience. Waving, yeah, it yeah, was. Like, it's a nice part also when they would interact with us. Also, this kind of really innocent, really raw reaction yeah, to actually curiosity. seeing, a, yeah, and curi like really pure curiosity, actually, right? About actually That's us awesome. traveling in that yeah. way. Mm -hmm. So that, that was nice. I mean, I guess later in Italy or wherever, it was more like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, sure. Another like, it's, it's kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, yeah. that was a funny feeling. Okay, what is the one thing you always carry with you when you backpack? Pillow, small pillow. Really, you carry a pillow? Yeah, yeah, I have one. Yes. I don't even know why I do it, but I've always been doing this. I always have a. Um, but I really no, like I've small seen, pillows. I've seen people carrying full full house pillows <laughs> on buses and you know no, it's Asia it's and stuff. Oh, yeah, but. <laughs> Okay, what about you? Uh, for me, it's my sketchbook for sure. Mm. Okay. So nothing else. Like, I don't care if my phone gets got stolen or anything else, but just the sketchbook is. I don't well, know. Because if... what's in it or what could be in it? No, what's in Well, both. I mean, okay. what's in it right now? And what, what happens when you run out of pencils? Well, I'm right now without a pencil. <laughs> I'm stealing hers. <laughs> so. okay. I'm going to end the interview there. Fantastic. Thank you very much for giving me your time and your energy. Thank and you. It's still raining outside, but less than before. I hope you get your van repaired. Yeah, I hope to. Well, oh, but yeah, it will be yeah. repaired soon. No, thank you so much. Well, that's all for this week, folks. And please remember, the same road can be travelled a thousand different ways. So get out there and make it your own. Until next week.